Ladies and gentlemen, the European Championships are upon us. And as a faithful disciple of the game, I will do my due diligence and predict the entire shebang, everything from the group stages all the way to the knockout stages to the eventual champions. And without further ado, Let's get started. All right, so here we are on UEFA's bracket tournament maker thingy majig, um, where you can go and predict the entire tournament from the group stages. Um, and then afterwards, you have to go and choose who you think are going to be the best third place teams um, who will go on and play in the knockout stages. And then from there, you do your regular bracket, see how things come about, and you'll be able to, uh, and I'll be able to determine um, the finalist and eventually the winner. And so starting with Group A, there's Germany, Scotland, Hungary, and Switzerland. Starting off, let's start off with the hosts themselves. Germany, obviously playing at home. It must be said that I think in recent times, they've been pretty inconsistent, obviously coming back of some pretty, let's put it quite frankly, underwhelming competitions, getting knocked out in the round of 16 of the previous Euro to England, obviously getting grouped in the previous World Cup and then being grouped in the 20, 2018 World Cup as well. So. It really is an opportunity for, for Germany to bounce back after some pretty, pretty major, especially for a, a footballing nation of Germany's standard. They have had some decent results in there, obviously beating France twice in the 2023-2024 season, as well as beating the Netherlands. So as I've said, the results have been really inconsistent. Some people may consider them as being potential dark horses, obviously with key players like Musiala, Wurtz at Leverkusen popping off, and Kai Havertz coming off a, I think his most prolific or second most prolific um, um, season as a professional. They certainly do have the talent there and with the ever gracefully aging Tony Kroos, they do have um, a squad in there. And obviously, as I said earlier, playing at home, I think it's going to give them the edge. And for this tournament, I think for this group, at least, I think it's pretty clear that they're going to come um, and, and finish first. So my, my my first pick here, I think Germany are going to finish first. For the rest of the group, I think it's all tighter. Let's go to one with Scotland. They had a pretty good qualifying campaign, obviously being in the same group as Spain. Scott McTominay being their seemingly their talisman, I think scoring seven goals and during during the qualification campaign. Obviously, in the previous year, I think they finished Either, yeah, they finished last in their group and weren't able to, 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 to make it through. And so they'll be trying to um, uh, improve upon that. Obviously, they have a whole host of really good players in um, Tierney, McGinn, uh, Scott McTominay, and obviously Liverpool's very well-known um, Andy Robertson. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. I just don't see them um, having enough quality there to be able to go beat Germany, obviously, but then also scrape enough points against their other competition. And unfortunately, I see the Scots finishing dead last. As for the next team here, Hungary, they obviously topped their uh, qualifier group, obviously also trying to improve on their previous Euro in which they finished um, last in the group of death, despite having some pretty impressive um, performances with draws against both France and Germany. So they'll be looking to improve upon that. Although it must be said that they played, I think if I'm not mistaken, all their games at home. As I said earlier, they, had a, they topped their qualifying group and obviously key players um, in Dominic Zoroslai, uh, Leipzig's Willy Orban, and as well as Peter Golashi, who admittedly hasn't been starting often for Leipzig, but is still a, a very top quality goalkeeper. With that, I think especially um, with the Dominic Zoroslai, I think they can do something here. Although I don't quite think it's going to be enough and I see them finishing third in Group A. I think though they will have enough and get enough points to potentially be one of the best third place teams, but I think it's going to be tight between them and the next team here, Switzerland, who, listen, I'm, I must still say I'm pretty salty about given um, the previous year, year where they beat France on penalties. Obviously them as well, they've got a very, very interesting squad, an aging squad, it must say. You, you It seems almost like with people like Xhaka, who's obviously not terribly old either, but Jern Shakiri still being an integral role still playing an integral part in their team, playing at, at, at Chicago Fire. My main concern with Switzerland is going to be where are their goals going to come from with Braille Embolo being supposedly injured or not being fit or will, his fitness is in, is, is in question. So it'll be interesting to see how they go and they line up up front. Obviously, they've obviously no Okafor from, uh, from AC Milan, but is he alone going to be enough? We don't know. Obviously, Granite Jacob being their metronome in midfield is going to be a huge help. I think it's going to be enough to, to get them through this group, but we'll see with how they go on and do um, further on afterwards. So now with group B and arguably one of the two, I would say group of deaths with Spain, Croatia, Italy, and Albania. This one, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to start off with the quite pr pretty 
clear underdogs in all of this. Being Albania, I believe they qualified straight through. I think they finished second in, in, in their qualifying group. So I had a pretty good imp impressive qualification campaign. I think this is their first tournament, if I'm not mistaken, since the 2016 Euros. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna pretend. Um, they're obviously underdogs in the group. I'm not gonna pretend I know much about Albania, although obviously they've got their, their main, I would say key player that um, that probably most people will be aware of is Armando Broya. But I think given the quality of the other teams in this group, I just don't see them. I don't see them going and uh, 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 making it out of the group. I think the quality of the other teams is just is just too much. And then now the interesting bit is going to be who do I think is going to finish ahead of them and more specifically in what order. And let me start off with the third place team who maybe this is going to be a bit controversial, but I think it's going to be the reigning champions Italy. I think the curse of the champions, um, which I guess this isn't really nearly as prevalent in in, in the Euros, I, I think. I think it's gonna be play play a huge part here. I think it must be said that Italy's team now is pretty remarkably different from the team that won the competition uh three years ago. No Verratti, their back line has changed, no more Bonucci, no more Chiellini, no more Spinazzola. So it's the team's changed quite a bit. Chiesa was obviously in in the form of his life in the previous heroes he's been coming in and out of form so and so for that Juve and obviously has been has been injured during that time as well and so given that and especially given the two other teams in the group I think that they will finish during this group although I do think they will get enough points and scrape enough points from the other teams to go and finish as one of the best third place teams and that brings me on to who I think is going to finish ahead of them and I think it's going to be Croatia who yes despite having um an aging squad this one though I must say Italy and Croatia I think they're really close but for me the thing that tips it is actually Croatia's recent result um they recently beat Portugal in Portugal granted it wasn't a friendly but beating Portugal is, is, is no small feat and I think with that yes of course they've got but, um players that we know Luka Modric at his best is still super influential even though he's you know what pushing probably on, on the wrong side of 30 now they've also got Marcelo Brozovic Mateo Kovacic a very probably one of uh the, the best midfields that you can possibly have they've got experience yes they are an aging squad but they also do have you know young um younger players there um obviously Gavario who was a defender of the tournament last time around their keeper Luvakovic as well so yeah I, th I think they got what it takes to go and finish out of Italy in, in this tournament and that leaves us with obviously who I think is going to top the group I think it's going to be Spain I don't think it's going to be easy for them but I think of the teams if in, in this group I think they have the highest quality overall and will be able to scrape the most amount of points from all the other teams they're an interesting team they've got uh, a, a good mix of players obviously a lot of very good you know young talent and it almost seems as though to a certain degree with the types of players that they've brought in it's sort of a if you want a, a departure from spa, typical Spanish play where you've got really you know small technical um, midfielders not that they don't you know don't have that anymore but with Lamin Yamal and Nico Williams extremely young players on the wings or more so you know your traditional direct wingers and taking out my man one-on-one -on -one and putting in a cross or something to really destabilize the the back line it's gonna be interesting to see how they implement that obviously gonna be without um some key players i think and, and gavi and, and balde the two barca boys and also with people like pedri's fitness we'll see if he's how much of what he's gonna play from what i gathered in in the last couple of friendlies he, he did play we'll see with them and obviously they also got you know rodri a, a mercurial talent as well my one thing is though is gonna be with regards to spain and something that i think potentially may be to lead to their downfall is going to be their their back line. Although it must be said they they were able to win the Nations League with this back line of Le Normand and Laporte, who obviously technically both French, but hey, that's neither here nor there. Is it going to be enough when coming up against the big boys on the European stage, your France's, your England's, your Portugal's, etc.? We'll see. I still think that's going to be enough though to get them through the group and their quality littered and other places on the pitch. I think it's going to be enough to get them through through here. All right. Now with that, let's go to Group C. Group C comprising of Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia, and England. All right, let's 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 get the elephant out of the room here. I think this is England's group to lose. I think England finished top and should finish top pretty pretty easily too. Although it must be said, and it's something I'm gonna say of France too when I get to them. I do think that France and England are probably most likely the two favorites coming into this tournament, but. I think for both France and England, especially more so England, I feel like they're a bit overhyped, if not like overrated. England, of course, arguably one of, if not the most talented, can be debated, squads coming into the tournament. With the 
plethora of high quality players in, in each position. Obviously, they got Jude Bellingham, La Liga player of the season, Cole Palmer, Premier League young player of the season, Harry Kane, top scorer in the Bundesliga. And then they've obviously got Phil Foden, best player in the Premier League, all the, the all these talents, so on and so forth. But it must be said that England, especially in recent times, have had some pretty eye raising to put it you know, quite frankly, um, results in recent times, obviously recent in the most recent result as, as the family miss, they've lost to Iceland in their final preparation game, friendly game before heading out to the Euros 1-0 at Wembley. They've drawn uh, against against Belgium at Wembley. They lost obviously against Brazil in, in March. Looking further back then, I think in, in World Cup qualifiers or Euro qualifiers, whatever, whatever it may be, I think they, they drew against North Macedonia. So there are some questionable results in all of that. I'd say the confidence that many people here in England have, I think is a bit like be be very weary of it. I still think that they've got enough quality here to make it very deep in the tournament. And it's going to be obviously more than enough to get make their way through to the group. But I'd be a lot more cautious. Who's going to finish second? That is the thing that I'm a lot more curious about. I think in this group, I think it's going to be. Uh, you see, the, the rest of the, I feel like the rest of the group, there's the quality separating the rest of the team is not huge, huge. Unfortunately, I would have to say that I think Slovenia, as good as they they are, as good as players of Yano yeah, Black, Josip Ilicic, Benjamin Sesko, who's obviously coming into good form. I just don't see them possessing enough to go in and to make a significant dent to the other teams in this group. And obviously the two in Denmark and Serbia, I think are it's much closer. I think here is probably where I'm going to make my first big daring move. I think that Denmark finished third in this group. Denmark have a, a pretty aging core of players in Ericsson, Kier, Schmeichel. They had a pretty disappointing World Cup. I think that perhaps at the previous year, I think they overperformed a bit, making it to a semi-final. will be hoping on Rasmus Hoyland to go and sort of be magical and be at his best. And I think they'll need that if they if they have any hopes of potentially finishing top two. I still do think that they'll have enough to go and finish uh, as one of the best third place teams, but I just don't think that they have enough to go and beat Serbia. And I think Serbia is going to finish second. Serbia also, granted, must be said, they have a pretty aging, aging core of players as well with Mitch Mitrovic, Tadic, and Milinkovic Savic. They finished second in their group behind Hungary, but I think that they've got enough quality littered around the squad to, to finish uh, second in the group. And now to group D, starting off with the Netherlands. The Netherlands obviously finished in their qualifying group second behind France after losing to them twice. Overall, they, they were able to bounce back and had a pretty positive all, all give it the, all right that those two results um qualifying campaign and they have a nice blend of young players and experienced players obviously their key players being Virgil van Dijk, Frimpong who's had an exceptional season at, at, at Leverkusen but also Chavi Simmons who I think is going to play a pretty important role overall it'll be interesting how Ronald Koeman decides to use him and how he decides to implement him I think potentially he could depending on how he you know performs so on and so forth and how the first couple of games go I think he could have a pretty crucial role as a starter for that team. The one concern though I would say is that Frankie De Jong, I think just recently uh, he's been deemed unfit for the tournament. And so it I guess poses a couple of questions and that's probably the one area in the Dutch where I would have had I'd have question marks of, of um, on, on their squad as their midfield. I think going up front, they're pretty good with Memphis Depay, from Pong sort of playing as a winger slash wing back, Javi Simmons being able to operate from the left, Cody Gakpo, et cetera, et cetera. But it's in the midfield where Frankie De Jong, I think would have been the metronome. Obviously still do have, you know, uh, Wijnaldum, but it'll be interesting to see how he coping with um, playing in guitar. I still do think that they are going to have enough quality here in this group to, to make it through. And I think in Group D, I think they finished second, which gets me on to the next team who I think is going to finish dead last. Unfortunately, I think it's going to have to be Poland. Once again, Poland also have a pretty aging squad. Lewandowski hasn't been at his best, especially this season, having, I think, for the first time in his career, not getting 20 league goals. So he's had a dip in form. They qualified by the playoffs, finishing third in their qualification group. Had a pretty good World Cup, it must be said, but I don't think that, I think they've been on the decline ever since. And unfortunately, I just see that the other teams in this group have way too much quality to for, for the Poland to really pose a significant threat to the rest of them, which brings me on to Austria, who I think obviously have a uh, pretty, pretty good players. Unfortunately, they're going to be without a huge, huge, huge influential player to their squad and David Alaba, who's obviously gone through injury. But, you know, with Marcel Sabritzer in midfield and Ralph Ragnick as their manager, I think they have enough quality to go and 100% finish as one of the, the better third place teams. And I think could cause both France and the Netherlands, the team who I think are going to finish ahead of them, a couple problems. Um, and so it'll be interesting how they go, especially in this the first game against France, which gets me on to my beloved France. But wait, hold on a sec. This isn't right. 
Ah, much better. Oh, oh, this. Where'd I get it? Ah, oh, please, please. It was just graciously given to me by today's sponsor, gogolshop.co, who not only got me this magnifique home French kit, but also the fabuleux away kit. But wait, it gets even better because they also hooked me up with the home and away Canadian jerseys for the Copa America. And before everyone in the comments starts yelling at me, ah, but Junior, I thought you said these kits were ugly and that anybody who got them should be arrested for treason. Like, OMG, you're such a hypocrite. <laughs> I'll never do that again. All right, first of all, I said that anybody who bought them should be arrested for treason. I did not buy these kits, all right? They were kindly given to me, all right? I chose my words very, very carefully. And second of all, not gonna lie, in person, they're not that bad, all right? They're not that bad. I may I may have exaggerated a bit on my video, okay? But enough about me, because the kind folks at Google Shop have let you in on the fun too. If you're looking for high quality kits for your favorite Copa America or Euro team, look no further than Google Shop, who have you covered for whatever national team it is that you support. And make sure to use coupon code JNB15 at checkout to get 50 15% off your order, or simply click the first link in the description to have the coupon code applied automatically for you at checkout. Thank you once again to the people at Google Shop for sponsoring this video. And now let's get on back to the French national team. All right, now to get on to arguably the most talented squad coming into the Euros and arguably in the entire world, my beloved France coming off a very, very good World Cup, finishing runners up to um, only to, to Argentina. Obviously key players in Mbappe, Griezmann, Theo Hernandez, Chouamini, Dembele, and, and, and those, those are just the starters. Not to mention any other players such as Coleman, Saliba, Turan, Barcola, Warren Zay, Emery, Arbio, Kamavinga, Conte, et cetera, et cetera. Didier Deschamps truly has a, a wealth of riches at his disposal and seeing how he's gonna go and implement that's gonna be very interesting. France were excellent in qualifying, obviously being in the same group as the Netherlands beat them both home and away. We're nearly perfect in qualifying, which I think would have been the first time they that they would have done so in history, but unfortunately got to draw away to Greece. They too, as I said a bit earlier, I think are a bit overrated um, in this season. They've already lost twice to Germany, once at home, once away from home. So there's been a bit, uh, a couple of scares. As of recording this, they've just come off the back of a nil nil draw against Canada, which they didn't play bad in necessarily, but they, they weren't certainly at their best either. And I guess you hope that you chalk that up to just them sort of getting the gears turning so on and so forth and not being at their best and that they will peak um, during the tournament itself. But certainly like, especially for me, what I would say is that in the last Euros, France were like overwhelming favorites to go and win the entire thing with Benzema coming back, Pogba there, Griezmann, et cetera, et cetera. Like the sentiment was like, almost like there's no point in playing the Euros, just handing them a trophy already. And we saw what happened there. They initially obviously we're losing to Switzerland, brought it back, we're leading. It's the 80, 80th, 80th minute, they're leading by two goals. And in the blink of an eye, two mistakes, bish bash bosh, you're now tied and they go on to lose it on penalties. So with that being French, I'm going into this game, even though most people would say that they're one of, if not the two best, along with England coming into this tournament, I'm going in this, okay. Yes, I think that overall, if I had to, as a betting man, I'd probably say, yeah, I'd probably have the best likelihood of winning the entire thing, but I'm keeping my, you know, expectations in, um, in check and being like, yes, of course, I think we have the best team, but I would urge everybody to think, or I'd, I'd, I'd make sure that, um, to not to not be overly confident with this. So obviously with that, I think France are gonna finish first in this group. And so therefore for group D, I have France finishing in first, the Netherlands in second, Austria in third, and Poland in fourth. And now let's get on to group D. Group D obviously being comprised of Ukraine, Slovakia, Belgium, and Romania. I'll start off with who I think is gonna be finished first. Starting off with Belgium here, I think Belgium are pretty clearly here the best team. It is certainly the latter parts or the twilight years of their golden generation with you know Hazard retiring. They still have obviously a, a lot of, of good players. Um, I don't think Courtois was called because of tensions with the manager and so forth, but still have De Bruyne, Lukaku, Doku, obviously being a, an up and coming talent, but even players like Onana in midfield as well, Trussard as well um, um, for, for Arsenal. I think they've got more than enough um, in this group to, to make it out um, first and pretty clearly. So I could easily see them winning all three games and having it, you know, having the group wrapped even on by match day two. Who finished the second to them though, I think is the much more intriguing thing. And then Shocker, I think it's going to be Ukraine. Obviously <laughs> Ukraine, it's going to be the first time that they actually go 
know um, and play an international competition since the outbreak of, uh, of the invasion. Ukraine finishing third in their qualifying group behind very impressive, you know, Italy and England squads, um, which is, you know, nothing to scoff at. But then even in the last rounds of, of qualifying, they played to a enthralling nil nil draw against Germany, who it must be said they were probably certainly second best to in overall, but doing so against a top quality nation, I think they've got enough here to just edge out the other teams in their group. Obviously with key players such as Zinchenko, Yarmolenko, and obviously Mikhail Mudrik as well. I think that the overall quality, I think they are the second most talented um, team in this group and will have more than enough to make it out of group E. And now the interesting bit here is going to be who finishes in second. And for this, I think I'm going to have to go with Slovakia. Slovakia finishing second in their qualifying group behind Portugal. And they've got a very solid disciplined team. That core players, I think, is just going to be too much for Romania, who are making their first appearance since 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Funnily enough, they actually finished ahead of Switzerland in their qualification group. Unfortunately, I just don't think that they will have enough quality to beat um, Slovakia, although I do think it's pretty close. But unfortunately, I have Romania finishing dead last in Group E. And now to round the thing up, finally, Group F made of Turkey, Portugal, Georgia and Czechia. I'll start off with who, unfortunately, I think are going to be uh, going home after the after the group stages here. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be Georgia, obviously qualified here um, through the playoffs. Their main man is obviously Kriva Kravatskelia, but Apart from that, I'm, I'm going to be honest here, I don't know much about the Georgian team. It's their first competition in a, in a long, long while, surely. I think well, perhaps one of their first in their history, I think, actually. But unfortunately, I just think that the other teams in this group are just far too strong for them. And I don't, don't see how they go and, and make it out here. I think, unfortunately, they could potentially come out of the group with zero points. Hopefully, you know, a couple goals, so on and so forth. But I think it's going to be very tough for them to envisage a, um, a qualification here. The next team I have, though, I think is going to be... And a bit warm, a bit conflicted here. I think that the Czech Republic are going to finish second and Turkey are going to finish third. And the reason I almost say this is basically because Turkey for the longest time in the in the previous year had, a, I'd, I'd say, pretty disappointing campaign, finishing dead last in their group, despite going into the 2020 Euros, as I would say, pretty as, as dark horses, people thinking that they could make a run and then in the end finishing dead last. They did manage to finish ahead of Croatia in the qualifiers and they've got, you know, very good players and Chernagulu and Ada Guler from Real Madrid, obviously, and they have had pretty historic results beating Germany. But I've, I've put my faith on the Turkey on the Turkey hype train, and they they fail to deliver. So I'm gonna have Czechia finish ahead of them. Czechia, who they themselves will look to improve on a quarterfinal exit from the previous tournament um, to Denmark, who finished second in their qualifying group, and will be hoping on their main talisman Patrick Schick to lead the line for them, who had an excellent tournament in, in Euro 2020, and will be hoping to replicate that form again um, once in this tournament. But unfortunately, even with that all said, I don't think that they're gonna be enough for who I think are gonna be the Group F winners, Portugal. I think Portugal are, if anything, I'd say of the big quote unquote European nations are certainly pretty underrated. I think after your France, England, I'd probably say arguably they probably have the most talented squad. Just to name of a couple of the players, even a, you know, aging, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo is still an excellent, excellent player. Obviously, Bernardo Silva, Bruno Fernandes, João Felix, Ruben Diaz, Cancelo, Rafael Leao, and PSG's Victor Machado Ferreira Vitinha Caray. I think there's just so much quality on this team that I, I think they run away again, just like Belgium in Group E. I think they could potentially go and win all three of their games, and it really is their groups to lose. The thing with Portugal, though, I'm going to be really interested to seeing, and if there's any you know Portuguese national team followers here, I'd be interested to see how they're going to go and set up. Are they going to have, is Ronaldo going to start? Is he going to come off the bench? Um, how is the dynamic going to be managed? Obviously, they have a great manager in Roberto Martinez, but I'm going to be very curious to see just how they go ahead and, you know, line up with everything. Um, does Ronaldo start? If Ronaldo starts, I feel like he, you, you can't really press, which is sort of the way that they want to. So I think potentially Gonzalo Ramos starts. Who do you start from the left? What's your midfield going to be? I think Vitinha, even putting you know, PSG bias aside after his season, obviously making it into the Champions League team of the season, I think should be starting that midfield, but it's it's really crowded in there. So it'll be interesting to see just how they go ahead and, and, and set up. But with that said, those are all the groups. For each group, I have Germany, Spain, England, France, Belgium, and Portugal winning their groups. I think that's pretty... <laughs> Uncontroversial there. I think that's probably the obvious choice. And in second place for each, I've got Switzerland, Croatia, Serbia, the Netherlands, Ukraine, and Czechia. And the third place teams are Hungary, Italy, Denmark, Austria, Slovakia, Turkey. And unfortunately, the people that will be going home after just three stages are going to be Scotland, Albania, Slovenia, Poland, Romania, and Georgia. And now, 
The thing obviously with the Euros is that even third place teams still have a chance of making it through. And of these, most of them actually do make it through. So the best four third place teams do make it through. So now it's gonna be interesting in seeing just how things are gonna pan out. I think of these, I'm pretty sure Italy are gonna make it through. I think they have enough quality there. I think they're gonna be um, in their group B. They are Albania and then all they need is, you know, a draw. I think three points obviously got Portugal, was enough for Portugal in 2016 to make it through. I think four points or even three, it's probably still gonna be enough to, to see your team through. I also think that Hungary are gonna be able to make it through. I think they'll be able to get a result either against Switzerland, or even against Scotland. I think them, it's really close. The gap is really close. And I think they'll have enough quality to make it through. As for the other teams, I think Turkey do make it through. And this is more so just because of the fact that Georgia is in their group. And I think they should be able to get three points from them. And then whether they get a draw against Czechia or Portugal, so on and so forth. I think they do enough to make it through. And for the final third place team that I think is going to make it through, I think it's going to be the Danes just about edging out Austria. I just think that France and the Netherlands are just going to be too good for them. And perhaps, you know, just the, I think they might go out on, on goal difference or something like that. And I think Denmark have a slightly easier group um, and can potentially get more points from Serbia and Slovenia in their group than Austria is going to get from France and the Netherlands in their group. So therefore, my four third place teams that I think are going to make it through are going to be Hungary, Italy, Denmark and Turkey. And now let's go into the knockout stages. All right, now moving on to the knockout stages, given how I predicted the groups would be, the round of 16 ties are gonna be Spain versus Hungary, Germany versus Serbia, Portugal versus Denmark, the Netherlands versus Ukraine, Belgium versus Italy, France versus Czechia, England versus Turkey, and Switzerland against Croatia. You know what? So let's start from the bottom here. Starting with Switzerland against Croatia. I don't think that it's going to be much of a close one here. I think it's going to be Croatia here. I think they've got the experience. They've been here, done that. Have the experience, obviously knocked Brazil out of a, a semifinals date with Argentina in the previous World Cup, finishing third in the previous edition of the World Cup. Even though they do have an aging squad, I just think they have too much talent, too much experience for Switzerland to match. And for the England-Turkey game, Although I think it could be a potential test for England. I just think that England's quality and their bench is just going to be too much. And I think England makes it through pretty comfortably. Next, France, Czechia. As long as France don't do any, you know, hocus pocus nonsense, I think France make it through here pretty comfortably, just like they did against Poland in, in the World Cup. And arguably the biggest heavy hitter here, Belgium versus Italy. This is going to be a very interesting one. I think it's, it's going to be a fact. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's a rematch of the previous either quarterfinals or no, no, no. Yeah, this is, I think this is a rematch of the quarterfinals in Euro 2020, in which in that case, Italy beat Belgium. And I think the same thing is going to happen, except Belgium this time are going to make it through because this time I think Kevin De Bruyne coming back into form, Jeremy Doku this time, who's a bit older. I think it's going to be a very close one. I could see this game going to penalties, for example. But yeah, I just think that the fact that Italy with their defense being a bit more inexperienced or not having the uh, certitude of a Chiellini and a Bonucci and missing people like Spinazzola. And I don't think that a is going to be able to replicate the form that he had um, in 2020. And so I think Belgium just, just about edge it out against the Italians. Moving on to the next round of 16 draw, the Netherlands against Ukraine. Again, in this one, as much as a feel good story would be for Ukraine to go make it through. Unfortunately, I just think the Netherlands have too much quality and I see them going through. Portugal versus Denmark. Once again here, I just see that Portugal have way Way, way too much quality in that Portugal um, and Cristiano Ronaldo are going to make it through. And as for the Germany Serbia game, again, here, Germany just far too talented playing at home, the crowd, so on and so forth. I think it's going to be too much for Serbia to handle. And then Spain hungry once again here. Unfortunately for Dominic Sabalsla and friends, I just don't think that they're going to have the quality to, to compensate, which brings about some very, very tasty quarterfinals in which I would say that you've only really got big teams left. So the first quarterfinal, Spain, Germany, second, Portugal, Netherlands, Belgium, France, and England versus Croatia. Some very, very big heavy hitters. Starting from the top here with Spain against Germany, a rematch of the 2008 final. I think Germany make it through and simply because they're, the fact that they're playing at home, even though they have had inconsistent results so on and so forth, I think the gap between the two teams is very small, but I just think that Germany 
playing, have the having the home advantage, and obviously also having players like Musiala and Verts coming off ex excellent domestic seasons for them, and obviously Kai Havertz as well. I think it's just going to be too much to ask of the Spaniards. And in this Portugal Netherlands game, I think this could be a very interesting game. Um, I think this could be a tight one. I don't know what it is. I feel like Portugal can make a really deep run in this tournament. I think their quality overall and the abundance of talent they have is in particular in that midfield. I think it's going to be too much for for the Dutch, which sets up a very very tasty semi-final between Germany and Portugal. Moving on to the next quarterfinal, Belgium versus France, cousin neighboring nations. I think I think France do it. I've lost belief in this Belgium golden generation. It's they're obviously past their prime, I'd say. Even though with players that you know like Doku and Trossard and so on and so forth, I think the fact that you know what you with France you look at the players you, that can come up off, off the bench, Barcola, Komen, Kolomani, Chomeni. France is like second best midfield. It's still better, most likely, if not on par with Belgium's best midfield. And so I just think France are going to have too much quality overall, not to mention, you know, Mbappe, Griezmann, Dembele, et cetera, et cetera, up front, so on and so forth. So I see France making it through pretty comfortably there. And finally, England versus Croatia, a rematch of the 2018 semifinal. And in this case, I think England are going to do it over Croatia. And in fact, I think now that I think of it, they also played each other in the group stages of the last competition, which England won. And I think, again, England's quality is going to be too much, although obviously Croatia do have the experience. But I would say that of these quarterfinals, I think it's probably going to be the tightest, even tighter than the Spain Germany one, just because Croatia have the experience. They've been there. They've done that. It's just you never nobody really believes in them. You don't ever go and say Croatia is going to go and win the Euros, but they got the experience. They've been there. They've done that. They've been to, you know, they finished podium in the last two World Cups obviously had a more disappointing um, Euro last time round um, given how they did in the previous World Cup but again the quality there I think could test England but I think overall England just are going to be able to do enough and, and make it through now that sets up some very very tasty semi-finals between Germany and Portugal and France and England starting off with the home team Germany versus Portugal this is going to be a very interesting one I think again here even though I would probably argue that Portugal's squad and is more talented it overall again i think that one extra edge of germany playing at home is just going to be enough to outdo it and i think they'll have enough quality and i could see this game easily going you know to penalties extra time so on and so forth it's gonna be a very tight one a very entertaining one for sure but unfortunately i just think that germany are just gonna be able to edge it out based on the fact that they're gonna be able to feed off the home crowd and most likely whether this is played i'm assuming in, in either in berlin or dortmund or or, or, or munich feed off that crowd and, and get them over the line, which moving on to our next semifinal and arguably the two heavy favorites, juggernauts in this competition, the two best teams, according to the bookies and so on and so forth, France versus England. And this one, I think, this one people are going to call it bias this that and the other but i think just like in the 2022 world cup i think france are ever so slightly gonna edge it although this time around i think it's really close i think it's very very close you can obviously make a case which side you think is more talented i think it's france hairs it out um just just overall a bit more and the more so the reason with france it's not necessarily that like up front i think you can compete with them if not you could argue that they probably have more talent going up front potentially but it's for me it's at the back is that england as we speak right now, England just doesn't really have a left back. Luke Shaw is coming back from injury, which means that their best option currently is going to be playing in an, an inverted fullback in, in Kieran Trippier at left back, which yes, maybe it works at center back, so on and so forth. But for your fullback, I think it can spell disaster. And knowing that he's going to be going against a Dembele, I think could be disastrous. We'll see if Luke Shaw can come back to fitness. They obviously didn't bring uh, Ben Chilwell, but even you know, overlooking that, you look at their center backs who's going to be the starting center back stones hasn't been fit for most of the season mark gay pretty inexperienced there harry Maguire, for as much as people you know clown on him and so on and so forth when he does put on that england shirt he he is actually pretty decent most of the time but he's obviously not fit john stones as i said earlier is not fit and so it leaves a lot of question marks as who's going to be your spring center back pairing right back i think obviously walker's a, a, is a pretty good lock for me those defensive frailties i think could cost them and when you know you've got Giroud, who could be a menace and bop it from the left dembele from the right and then you think france can bring on barcola afterwards so i think it's just going to be too much for the english to handle although i must also concede that going 
The other way around, England with Foden, with Saka, Palmer, Kane, so on and so forth is also pretty lethal. But when you compare them, who's defending on their side, Theo Hernandez, Mendy, Saliba, the Premier League's best defender, Bonate, et cetera, et cetera. I think if you're English, be more envious of France's back line and how they pair up against your attacking threats compared to the other way around than France and how they come France's attacking lineup and how they compare against England's um, defense. So because of that, I think France are going to make it through. And that sets up a very, very tasty final between France and Germany. The angle French feud continues. And listen, people call it bias. People will say this, that, and the other. But I think France is going to do it. I think it's going to be very difficult playing away from home in a very hostile environment. But I think France, with the quality, I think if France on their day, if France play at their best, even like at 90%, I think France can make it to a final and are going to be able to lift that European championship. But I'd be curious to know what you guys think. What do you guys think of my prediction? Let me know in the comments down below. Do let me know who you guys think are going to be the Euro 2024 champs. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And remember, stay safe, stay kind, and stay blessed. Godspeed.